Hi everyone, Maria Tyler here. I'll be taking you through entering your financial statements today. Um, just have a small disclaimer to make. This year I'm doing it with a, my newborn baby. So if you hear a squeak in the background, please just excuse it. <laughs> I don't want to have to redo the video. Um, I'll, I'll definitely pause it if he squeaks too much. But um, like many of you, you're juggling a few commitments. So entering into financial statements, there's what's the point of doing it? Well, the point of the whole assessment is to make you become familiar with financial statements. So basically we get you to type out or enter every line in your financial statements and subsequent assessments will get you to manipulate that. Um, but that's just so you become familiar with financials. Now it's up to you how familiar you want to become with it. We definitely get you to the basic level where you have to actually look at every item in your financial statements. Um, whether or not you choose to investigate those items further is up to you and obviously will impact on your own learning journey. Now in this unit we only focus on three uh, financial statements. So the statement of changes in equity, the balance sheet and the income statements. So the profit and loss and comprehensive income statement. Collectively, we call those the income statements, and that's something you'll have to get used to in accounting. I'm sorry, lots of terminology and also lots of um, different names for the same item. So you'll notice that some of your company statements will be called a totally different name. For example, the balance sheet might be called the statement of financial position. Um, your profit and loss statement might be called an income statement, or it might be called statement of financial performance. Um, so you'll just have to look and really become familiar with your actual financial statements because they're all in the same format regardless of the name that they've been given um, so that you can actually identify which one is the correct one to be entering. So we enter the statement of changes in equity, we also enter the balance sheet and we enter the income statements. Don't enter your cash flow statements for this unit. We look at the cash flow statements in a subsequent unit. We're going to enter these financial statements into um, your company's spreadsheet, which is in Excel. And we really do need to enter the financial statements so that your assessment is ready for the next steps, particularly restating in assignment two. So where do I start? Download your financial statements as electronic documents or PDFs if you can, and then just print out only the four to five pages of the actual financial statements that you really need. So that's if you like to work manually as I do. I literally just printed mine off just then. Um, so I like to have a look at things manually so I can tick and flick. If you like, if you prefer to work from an electronic document, that's fine. Um, you don't need to print out anything, but just look at, you'll only, for, for this particular um, aspect of the assessment, you will only need to enter the financial statements, not your whole annual report. A commonly asked question is, what sets of figures do I enter? Do I enter, I've got group and I've got parent. So we want to enter the consolidated or group figures. And again, this is a good question for you to investigate why and perhaps create a, a peer-wise question or two um, from it. But essentially, some companies will list out um, group figures as well as parent figures. We want the whole group or the consolidated figures. So with Wes Farmers, it only lists consolidated figures, which is great. So I only have one step to look at. But if your company lists more than one, then you, you want to use the group or the whole um, consolidated figures. My other tip is to use formula in Excel to check your totals. So enter every, all your rows in and then for your totals, use the sum formula in Excel and that will just ch provide a check against your financial statements to see that A, you've entered every line and B, to also serve as a check for your financial statements to see that they've added things correctly. Now, every now and then you'll notice when you use the formula sum in Excel that you might be out by um, one digit um, in your financial statements. That's usually due to rounding, so that's okay. Um, I would stick with your sum formula in Excel. Okay, so um, let's go and enter some financials. I'm going to be using Wes Farmers, which is my example company that I used throughout the unit. So get the company spreadsheet from Moodle, which I'll just quickly flick to Moodle now. So this is a previous um, term site, but essentially the company spreadsheet is always in the top central panel of Moodle. When you click on that, it will bring you up to a spreadsheet, which looks like this. And when you click on that, 
it'll actually download it to wherever you want to and then you can simply open it. I've saved it in the same folder with all my West Farmers annual reports. You can see I've downloaded for a few years. You don't need to do that. I just, I enter these every year. So I have a few collected there. Um, when I'm entering the financial statements, you only need to enter four, the last four years worth of, of finance figures. Um, and to do that, I actually only open two of the reports to enter the figures. Obviously look at all of your reports for other aspects of the assessment, but for entering the financials, you can get away with just using the most recent report and two years previous to that, because the most recent report will include this year's and last year's, and then the, for in my case, the, the previous year to that, so the 2016 report will also include figures for that year plus its previous year, so 2015. So entering the financial statements in this video, I'm, I've literally only printed out the five pages um, from my 2018 report and five pages from my 2016 report because you'll notice that there's two columns. So one is um, for the, the current year and the other column is for the previous year's comparative figures. Okay, so if we open up our company spreadsheet, it'll look like this and we will have to customise it. So you can type, well, I'll type in West Farmers limited. Once you type it in up here, it will automatically flow through to the rest of the spreadsheet for you. Martin's already linked it. Now the format is statement of changes in equity first, then balance sheet, then our income statements underneath. So remember we don't enter the cash flow statement. So we're going to enter our statement of changes in equity. We only look at the total column. Then underneath that we'll enter our balance sheet and then underneath the balance sheet, we finish off with our income statements. And the spreadsheet already sets that out for you. So you can see, first of all, is our statement of changes in equity. Scrolling down to our balance sheets. Scrolling down further, we get to our income statements. And we'll enter the income statements with profit and loss section first, and then comprehensive income statement at the end. All right, so um, we have to also customise our balance date, you can find your balance date when you actually open your annual reports and you have a look at your company. So West Farms, I know, because I've worked with them for a number of years, they have a 30 June balance date. But go to your annual report, your companies may not. So open up the 2018 and I'll go to my financial statements. In the heading, usually you can see um, that your balance date is listed in there. So in my case, I know it's 30th of June. Your balance date might be any date of the year. Um, common ones are 31 December, 31 March, 30 September, um, and I've also seen the 28th of February too with some um, overseas companies. So, But it can be literally any day. If you've got a company that does um, multiple, so they do it on the exact day of that year when they balance the accounts, um, then just choose the date. So for example, a company might have a balance date of 31st December, but one year they might balance it on the 1st of January. So for those financials, they'll list it as, as at the 1st of January um, instead of the 31st December. But there's only that one day difference. So just put it all as the 31st of December. Same with the February one. Sometimes um, you'll find that they put the 28th of February and then in the leap year it will be the 29th of February. That's fine. Just leave it as the 28th of February. Okay, so once we complete it up here, it will automatically flow through um, to most things, hang on, balance sheet doesn't because it's as at as opposed to for the years ended but the income statement should flow through for the years ended. So balance sheet, um, we only report the figures as at one point in time instead of for a period of time which the other financial statements do. Alright, so now I'm going to go to my financial statements. I like to start from the most um, from the earliest year, so for me that's 2015. But before I do that, I'm going to get a list of items that I'm going to enter. Now, if we just have a look at the statement of changes in equity first, to have a look at the structure, because it is structured slightly different to the other financial statements, you'll notice that when you have a look through your financials, all of the financial statements are listed with the items as rows and the years as columns. So here we've got 2018 and then 2017. The, so again, we'll, we'll go through, so this is my comprehensive income statement, has the items as rows and the year, years as columns. The balance sheet also has the items as rows and the years as columns. And then we get to, skip over that one, we get to the statement of changes in equity and it does it the other way, the opposite way. So it actually has the items as columns 
and the years as rows. So it starts with the 2016 year here, and then it'll have, sorry, the 2017 year here, and then we'll have the 2018 year underneath it. So it actually puts the years as, as two rows instead of two columns, and it has the items of equity as columns instead of rows. So it's, it's set out the opposite way. Now, um, what we want to enter for this assignment is just the total equity column. So we only want to enter the figures in this last column. We can look at these other figures because these show us basically the changes in each of those equity items and you could check those equity items as rows back in the balance sheet. We only want to enter the total figure. The other thing I wanted to mention too was just now while we're looking at the income statement first, some of your companies won't list out a separate income statement, they'll combine it with the statement of comprehensive income. So they'll actually have one statement and combine it together. So they'll have income statement and statement of comprehensive income as one, and they usually call it something like statement of profit and loss and comprehensive income. Um, so in which case it's still the same, it's just literally got the CI section, the comprehensive income section tagged on to the end of the income statement section. So whether you, your company's got it as two statements like mine has, or whether it's just the one statement, that's fine. We still enter the whole thing. So we enter both the statements or just the one statement with both of them in it. Okay, now I say go and type out every line, um, but because students try and copy and paste from their financial statements to make it quicker, and I found that most of your PDF documents don't like doing that, when you copy and paste, um, so for example, so go into the statement of changes in equity, you want to enter these items. When I click here and right click copy or press control C for copy, copy, when I go to paste it into my Excel document, well that's not too bad actually, <laughs> most of the time it will muck it up. So you'll actually literally have to sit there and, and type each of the, these items in. But essentially, um, have a look at these items before you start because some of them will be unique to that year, i.e. they won't have a figure um, in every year, but some of them will be the same every year. So if I have a look just with the 2018 report to start with, so this is 2017 okay. figures, this is 2018's figures, you can see we start with an opening balance, then net profits listed, listed under that, then other comprehensive income, and they've listed it out under that. It's the same structure essentially as for 2018. So we've got the opening balance, then net profit, then the other comprehensive income listed out. So you can see the structure is essentially the same. So we want to enter every single item that's got a figure attached to it. So I'll, I'll, mine has actually copied and pasted, which is nice. I'll start with that. Just get rid of the dates and just type in opening balance. Um, net profit for the year, other comprehensive income, that's a heading. We don't want to enter headings or totals. Um, we just want to enter the actual items. Okay, so I like to link my opening balance. You can see it's put the note numbers in there. Get rid of the note numbers. So you will need to do a little bit of formatting if yours does copy and paste like mine has. Otherwise, just simply type, start typing. So you can do this while I'm doing mine. Go and grab your financials and start entering yours. And I'll put closing balance in here. Okay, so I've, that's just pretty much a copy and paste of um, my 2017 figures. You'll notice though, having a look, so this is how it's set out. So you've got the opening balance, your net profit, my company has actually listed out all of these items of comprehensive income. So there's three items here, giving me a subtotal of other comprehensive income. Then they add this subtotal to the profit to get total comprehensive income. So comprehensive income equals normal profit and loss plus comprehensive income, um, profit and loss, and that gives you your total. Uh, we, we talk about a difference between other comprehensive income, which is just the sum of these three items in my case, and total comprehensive income, which is the sum of other comprehensive income and profit. So if you can understand that distinction now, it'll help you out later on when we go to restate the financials. 
these items down here, so I've got four items down here, we call them transactions with shareholders. And when we come to restate, you'll simply just be relisting those. But it's important to separate them out now. Looking at the transactions with shareholders, we've got share-based payments. So again, in 2018, I've got a figure for that. We've got the issue of shares in 2017, but we don't have any issue of shares in 2018. So there's only going to be a figure um, for 2017. There's 328 million. There'll actually be nothing. I won't enter anything in the 2018 column, but I'll still put it in there because there's a figure for 2017. Proceeds from the exercise of in-substance options. We don't have that in 2018 either. Um, instead, we've got something totally different. So there'll be a, a figure in 2018 that we enter that we won't have in 2017. Um, and we've got equity dividends for each year. Quite large equity dividends where farmers pays as well. Okay, so I'm going to go and, and enter all these figures in. I only want to enter in the total column. I'll just go and show you the statement of changes in equity for 2016. My 2016 annual report. I use these so much I know where they are. <laughs> it's my income statements. My balance sheet. Okay, so here's my statement of changes in equity for 2016. So again, I just want to enter this total equity column. Um, I've got a, a, these are my figures for the 2015 financial year and these are my figures for the 2016 financial year. And essentially it's set out the same way, opening balance, net profit with other comprehensive income and then my transactions with shareholders. And again, for 2016, net profit, my other comprehensive income um, and my transactions with shareholders. So spend the time to just become familiar with those financials. So I'm going to start by entering my 2015 figures and I like to put an opening balance in um, and literally link from, from there. So I don't actually calculate, Excel calculates the balances for me and I can check that they match to my financial statements. So 25987 is for the 2015 year. 25987. Okay, now I'm literally going to enter um, all of my figures in now. So I'll pause the video, enter them in, and then come back. So um, you can do the same thing. So grab your financial statements and you can start entering your financials and um, I'll come back and show you the video, which for you will be quite instantaneous once I've entered the figures. So 25987, I'm entering this column here. So net profit is 2440. My uh, items of other comprehensive income, this was a heading, I'm pretty sure. Yep, it's not only one enter. This one is my exchange differences on translation of foreign. Yep, I've got that one here. So negative 11. Negative 11. Just show you how to do this first few. Change in the fair value of cash flow hedges. Is that this one? Yes, it is. Just making sure those items are the same. Negative 182. Remeasurement on loss of defined. Yep, this one's a remeasurement gain in this year, so it's a positive one. I'll leave it as, as that. Positive one. All right, now this is a total. So I'm actually going to put a formula in here. He's exercising his vocal cords. So sum of that. And check that that 192 matches what is in my financial statements. Okay, so it matches. Now my this will be my total comprehensive income, which should equal, if I put a formula in here, my other comprehensive income plus my profit for the year, 2248. So check that it does match, 2248, and it does. All right, so now I'll enter my transactions with shareholders. Make sure they've got the same one. So I've got share based payment transactions. Yep, so 11 for that. For this one is issue of shares. So capital return, no. So I have to enter that one in and own shares acquired. Proceeds, so proceeds from exercise of in substance options. So I need to enter those two in. Insert here, control Y to repeat that action and paste those two in. 
mine actually does paste. I'll fix up the formatting later and I'll enter those two items. So it was negative 864 and negative 8. Negative 64, negative 8. Now I've got proceeds from the exercise of in substance options. So let me go and check if I've got those. Here they are. I've got nothing for the shares in 2015 year. And I do have equity dividends in the 2015 year. Oops. Yeah. So I've got 2597 and it's negative because we're paying that out to shareholders. So they that is decreasing our equity. All right, so now I should just have my closing balance, which will be the sum of, so it's my opening balance plus my comprehensive income that I calculated down here, plus all my transactions with shareholders, 24781. Check that that is the same. It is 24781. Very good. Now, the next year, I can simply link it to the closing year's balance and format that formula across. So from now on, I won't have to link that balance. Now, if your company has restated their financial statements in one year, which I see Wes Farmers has done in 2017, which is in the 2018 report, um, I'll show you how to deal with that. Okay, so I'm happy with all of these. I'll do some formatting once um, I turn it off screen. So you're not watching me and sort of um, wasting time. You can be entering yours. I'll start entering my 2016 figures now, starting with my profit, so 407 and my items of other comprehensive income, so my exchange differences. Yep, I do have those, so 15. So again, I'll pause the video and you can continue to enter and I'll come back once I've entered all of my figures. Um, just a note, I'm still halfway entering them. I've just got to the totals. Once you've entered a formula in Excel, just drag it across how I did with the um, opening balance one. So just literally drag it across so you don't have to re-enter that again. And it will automatically calculate for you for the subsequent years. These will change automatically once we fill in figures. And you can check then um, these totals are calculating correctly. So negative 78 and 329. I'm checking here, negative 78 and 329. So I've checked that my totals are correct and that assures me I've entered everything correctly up here. So I'll keep entering and again I'll come back once I've finished. Okay, so I'll go to my 2018 report now. So that's my figures for 2016 and 2015 now. Flicking through to my 2018 annual report. So again, I want to make sure that the opening balance is the same. Um, that is what I'm starting with from my previous annual report because if it isn't, I need to make adjustments. So I'm just entering the total equity column in. So I'll start with my 22,949, which is the opening balance for 2017. So it does actually match 22,949. So I don't have to do any adjustments this year. Start with the net profit and enter those in. Okay, so I finished entering the 2018 figures in, which had 2018 and 2017, and all of my balances match. So my final closing balance for 30 June 2018 was 22,754, and if I quickly check that back, you can see that is my final closing balance, 22,754. So also left for me to do with this statement is just to do a bit of formatting, make my blue and white lines a bit pretty, and take off the bolding here that's not supposed to be bold and, and so forth. Um, and then we'll move on to the next statement. Now, I did mention before, if you had an opening balance in, in the subsequent annual report that was different to the closing balance from the previous annual report, you can simply add in a line, so right-click insert and add in a line and just put opening adjustment for restated financials. Um, some companies restate their financials, which is different to the restating we're going to be doing later in assignment two, but some companies will restate their financial statements if they've had a change in accounting policy or other similar reasons. So there may be, so what they basically do is the accounting policy they've used for the current year, they'll then restate the previous year's comparatives according to the same policy, which may result in some figures being slightly different. 
So just add in a line there and call it, you know, um, adjustment for restated financials in annual report or something similar to that and then put in the difference and then you can start with the opening balance as per the current financial statements. So I'm just going to fix up the formatting and we'll move on to the balance sheet. Okay, so um, I've finished formatting it neatly now. So I'll move on to entering the balance sheet is down here. So I'm going to go to my 2016 annual report and find the balance sheet and I'm going to enter the 2016 and 2015 figures in. So see if it'll let me copy and paste. I'm going to do right down to total assets to start with. Copy that and then control C to copy and then control V to paste. So it's pretty much let me do it. I don't think your annual report's well, most PDFs don't actually let you do it, and West Farmers never used to either. Just get rid of the note numbers here. Um, so if you're lucky like me and it lets you do it, that's good. It'll save you a bit of time typing. But if not, um, the whole purpose of this one is to get yourself familiar with each item. So assets, current assets, what are they, um, and all the items, current assets, and so forth. So if, if you can't copy and paste from your PDF, which I'm not stating that you do, um, I'm suggesting you actually type them down. So I'll go in and, and start entering these figures. So we don't want to enter headings. So assets and current assets, we, they're, they're both headings for me. I'll we'll start from cash. So 2015, that was 711. Then 1463, 711, 463, and so forth. So I'm going to keep entering those. I'll pause the video and come back. Okay, so just showing you how I add my formulas in. So I'm just going to simply sum my current assets and then drag that formula across and then check that my current assets match. So 9093 and 9684. So 9093 and 9684. So they do. And I'm going to enter in my non current assets. So again, I've just finished entering those. So I'll just show you, I'll put in a sum formula to check all my non-current assets, drag it across once I've entered it, 31309 and 31099, very good, okay, so my total assets is also a formula, simply current assets plus non-current assets, so equals my current assets plus non-current assets, and drag that one across as well. So 4402 and 4873, 4402 and 4873, good. All right, so that's my assets entered. Now I'm going to enter my liabilities and equity, right down to total equity. There's not enough lines is what it's telling me from down here. So I'm just going to enter in some lines. Control Y repeats your last action. And let's see if it will paste it in now. Good. Don't worry about the formatting for now. We'll show you an easy way of fixing that up later. So we don't want to head my, enter my heading. So there's no figure for that. Current liability is also a heading. So I'm going to start from trade and other payables. So from here, 5761. This is where this sheet comes in handy because I can simply enter them all the way down till I get to a total, enter my formula in and pull it across. Non-current liabilities are heading, so I'm going to start with my interest, so check 9636. Where are we? No, I've missed something. Let me go and have a look. This is why you enter the formula in, so you can check. 913, 64, 165, 142, and 241. Mmm. Oh, I've been dyslexic. Sorry, 5761. There we go. 9726. Let me check that now against my annual report. 9726. Very good. See, this is the importance of doing your formula. So. Go and enter these ones in now, 6491. Okay, so it should add up to 10424, which it does, which is 
good. So enter my non-current liabilities now and check my formulae. That's my heading. So I start from here. And I'm up to my totals. So that's my total non-current liabilities. Check that it matches. My 5895 and my 7410, which it does. Now my total liabilities is again a total, so put a formula in there, which equals my non my current plus non-current. Check that it matches, which it does. And now my net assets is also a formula, which is my total assets, figure up here, minus my total liabilities. That would be net assets. And drag that across. Now let me check because my net assets figure must match to my equity figure. 24781 and 22949. 24781 and 22949. Very good. Now I'll just quickly enter my equity figures and again make sure that they match. And that's my balance sheet done for two years. So equity, that's a heading. That's a heading. So I'll start from here. Issue capital minus 31 for that one. And 2016. Okay, put a formula in here, equal sum of my equity and make sure it balances to my net assets figure. It's very important. Okay, so I'm just going to fix up some formatting. I'll show you how to do the colour formatting. So I want to cut, continue on our nice um, white and blue lines. I'll take the bolding off that and format painter. Whoops. So here's my format painter that paints any line I touch with the same format as what I was in when I clicked it. So I double click to keep it on. I'm just going to paint every second line white. And now I'll format pan of this. This is a text cell, so I don't want to format pan of my figures the same as that. I just want to format pan of my numbers with the number cell. make a mistake you can always press undo okay so that's so far so I'll go through and enter 2018 now when I do the 2018 balance sheet i have got to make sure that I check that these figures are already in there if there's a new one I have to add it in uh, and if there is no figure for that particular item that I've already entered then I just leave it blank so I go to my 2018 annual report and find my balance sheet which is here so check that it's got these items cash and cash equivalents receivables trade and other um, so it doesn't have any receivables finances finance loans like here so that'll be blank and it's got inventories derivatives and other so pretty much I can start entering so cash so 1013 and so forth so I'll enter all those figures in for you see how it's already summing that for me Go to the 2018 report, might help. And 1013. Now it doesn't have any for that one. Inventories it does. And for these two last ones it does. So 9667. Nine six six seven, so that's good. Now enter these ones in for the twenty eighteen figures for cash. Doesn't have any of those. Does have inventories, very large amount. We'll talk about that in a future unit. Eight seven oh six. Twenty eighteen report. Eight seven oh six. Very good. All right, so I'll do the same thing. I'll enter those in. And check my totals match. So you can see how having the formula in there serves as a second check. It's very good to do that. All right, so again, check. They do have the investments in joint ventures. They do have deferred tax, property, plant and equipment, goodwill, intangible assets, derivatives, and other. So they've got exactly the same line items. So I don't have to add any in. I can simply enter them. There's no dramas if it does have new lines you simply right click and insert and then go through and format painted things how you like to so check that that 
3448 and the 4115 match. 3448 and the 4115, very good. Now I'll do the 2018 figures. One, two, eight. All right, so 28, two, two, seven, and 36, nine, three, three. 28, two, two, seven, and 36, nine, three, three. Good. That's my assets done for the next two years. Now I'll go through and do the same thing for my liabilities. So firstly, check that they're all there. So I've got the 2018 reports in my hands. Um, and go to my spreadsheet and let's check. So I don't want a head, that's a heading, that's a heading. So start with trade and other payables. Yes, they have those. Interest, bearing loans, income tax, provisions, derivatives and other good. They're exactly the same, so I can literally just start entering. Check my total and it matches. Okay, 10025 and that also matches. So again, checking against my 2018 annual report. And it's got all of these line items. Interest provisions, derivatives, and other. Good, okay, so I can just simply enter. 5757 seven, and 16, 174, and 23941. They're just showing you these. That's 5757, five, seven, 161174, seven, and 23941. So I'm going to enter these now. Now there's no figure for that. Blank. So 4154, 4154, 14179, and 22754. And 22754, very good. So checking my equity again, that's issued capital, reserve, shares, retained earnings, and reserves. Very good. So I'll simply enter these. Minus 26 for that one. And minus 43. Okay. Does that match my net assets? Good. All right, so all I've got to do now really is just fix up, take out the note numbers from me copying and pasting from my annual report. Fix up um, the formatting. I like to use italics for my totals and bold for my headings. So you'll see when I do headings, um, I put them in bold and unline them. And my totals, so take off bold, my totals I like to put in italics. So again, so take off all the bold, control B takes it off. Control B is a shortcut key. Just highlight the whole lot and do control B. Oops, take it off. Um, and then I like to go through and then put a little a bottom border on to show that it's a total. It's my total current assets. My non-current assets is a heading. So bold and underline it, bold and underline. And here's two totals again. So I italicize those. I'll just put a, so I'm just showing you how to, how to do quick formatting. Liabilities is a heading. So bold, current liabilities, headings are really bold, underline them as well. These are my, that's a total here, so I italicise that. Put a little border in just so I can see that that's a total. Non-current liabilities is a heading. Net assets, so here's my three totals. And equity is a heading, so bold and underline it. And this is the total, so I italicize it. Now you can do whatever formatting you like for yours, for your headings. You don't have to follow my convention, but that's generally how I do it. So save. I can get rid of all these lines. Right click and delete. Now I'm up to my income statements. So again, Going through to my 2016 annual report, let's go and have a look at my income statements. Now I have two, so I have one here, it's the income statement, and then I also have um, the statement of comprehensive income. Let me 
which is just off my screen here. Can't move it across, let me decrease it. Usually it gives me a little scroll bar, but I can't scroll it. And my statement of comprehensive income is here. So I've got my, my income statement, which comes first, and you'll notice the very, very profit line is 407 for 2016. That's what my comprehensive income statement must begin with. So your comprehensive income statement simply starts with the net profit from your income statement. If you've got them listed as one statement, it'll simply, it won't put this line twice. It'll just put it once and it'll list all of these underneath it. So this is our comprehensive income. Now a note here, I'll just make this larger, this comprehensive income statement. Okay, it's not playing nice. Um, this comprehensive income statement here, it's actually listed out items of comprehensive income. Now, it's a good idea to just check this back against your statement of changes in equity, which we've already entered in, because these items of comprehensive income are also included in your statement of comprehensive income. So remember, when we entered it from way up the top here, there was these items of what we called other comprehensive income, and they listed them out as three for me here. So just want to check that these totals actually match that in your income statement. So you notice they've actually, see how they've put cash flow hedge reserve and they've listed out even more particulars here, a number of figures that will add to the total that they listed out in just one line here. So there, there may even be more information about your other comprehensive income in your statement of comprehensive income, which is what it's for. So you'll see I've got the, the foreign currency translation reserve, I've got the cash flow hedge, and I've also got um, retained earnings. This is an item that will not be reclassified to profit and loss. So these are all these are all concepts that we'd like you to explore as you're going through in your, your learning journey. Even the concept of comprehensive income is um, hard to get your head around. I used to call it what if income. Um, so profit and loss is what we normally understand a profit and loss to be, but then we realize that there are certain items um, of income that should be recognized but they're not because we for one reason or another haven't included them in the profit and loss statement for example you've bought a land piece of land 20 years ago for ten thousand dollars and it's now worth fifty thousand on the balance sheet it would still show us say ten thousand dollars from 20 years ago but you want to recognize that it's actually worth a bit more than ten thousand so you would revalue that land on your balance sheet and, and so the the difference of forty thousand to show it back to its value today would be included as income in this statement here. So that's just a very, very quick example. Um, so foreign currency, obviously, uh, worst farmers have multinational or international um, transactions. So the exchange rate differences is obviously included um, in here. And also they do hedge some sort of hedging as well, which they explain about in the notes. So comprehensive income is all the, the other income that we haven't actually realised in our profit and loss statement. We put it into this statement. Um, we talk about other comprehensive income, which is all of these items added up. And then we talk about total comprehensive income, which is other comprehensive income plus profit. So don't get confused. It's very easy to, so you're not alone. Okay, so for, for purposes of this assessment, I want to enter my income statement first and then statement of comprehensive income for all years. So again, for the 2018 annual report, scroll up. I've got my income statement to enter and then also my statement of comprehensive income. So I can start, I can literally start with revenue and I wanna go right down to profit attributable to the members or the parent. So don't worry about the earnings per share bit. We don't need to enter that for the purposes of this assessment. This will be good for you to explore actually what the um, what earnings per share is. You'll actually have to calculate your earnings per share in a subsequent assessment. Um, and also there's a common question that's always asked about the difference between basic and diluted earnings per share. So see if you can find that one out before we, we cover that in, in a lecture. You might have the answer when we ask it. So for the purposes of this assignment, just stop at the profit. So 1197, which is where your comprehensive income statement picks up from. So 1197 is where this next statement should start. It starts from the profit of the income statement. So I'm going to see if it's going to copy and paste for me again. If not, I'll just type it in. So I used to do every year. Let's 
doing it. All right, so I'll go back straight to 2015, so to my 2016 report and start entering these in. So revenue back then, I'll just make this a bit larger for you. Uh, 62,447 and then all my expenses. So enter things exactly how your financial statement has shown you. 62,447. This is a heading, so raw materials is going to be the first entry for me. Negative 43,045 minus 43,045. Employee benefits, negative 8,198 and so forth. Freight and other, is that what they've got? Freight, occupancy. Occupancy related, let me find my statement so I don't have to keep flicking. Depreciation and amortization. Impairment. Other expenses. Okay, we've got to a formula, it's a total, so enter my sum in, 59,100, 59,100, very good. Other income, yes they have that there, other income, 330, share of net profits from joint ventures, okay earnings before interest and tax is a total, so it equals my revenue. I'm going to add my expenses because they're already entered as a negative. So adding them essentially minuses them. So revenue minus expenses plus my other income, which is these two. So 3759, check that that is the total that is there, which it is. So make sure, spend the time learning your financial statements to become familiar with them. It's very important. Finance costs. Negative 315. Income tax expense. Now they've got a they've got a, another profit line in here. So profit before tax, that's a total, which is my profit before tax. Minus my finance costs. So 3444. 3444, which is right. And income tax expense is Minus 1004. My profit from continuing operations is my profit before tax minus my tax. Discontinued operations is a heading, so you don't want to enter. Don't enter headings and totals. Um, and that's all I've got for, for this statement. There's nothing else. 2440. So that should be what I end at. So 2440 is what I want to end at. Look at this. Just finished. I'll just insert that so it's staying away from my working area. You can always insert lines, as many lines as you need to. So that's my 2015 statement. I'm going to enter my 2016 statement. Oops. Forgot to drag my formulas across. Make sure that you drag your formulas across so you don't need to worry about them again. Drag them across for all four years and they will automatically calculate and serve as a check for you. Okay, other income and share of net profits. So 1346, yes. 308 for my finance costs. We'll look, we'll look at separating out finance income um, soon too. We'll need that for a future assignment. Okay, so 407. Just check that that matches. 407, very good. Okay, so now I want to enter my um, other items of comprehensive income and loss, which is these ones. So I'll start copy right the way down to there, copy, I'm going to have to enter in some lines here, so insert, control Y to repeat my last action, and then let's paste that in, I'll fix up the formatting later, I just want to start item, entering items at the moment, so I've got foreign currency translation reserve, 
the exchange difference on translation of foreign operations, 15 and negative 11 to enter in. So 15 minus 11. Notice I haven't formatted these yet, so they're just entering exactly how I enter them. That's a heading. Nothing there. I'm just entering them in. Items that will not be classified to profit and loss. Retained earnings as a heading. Remeasurement isn't. It's got a figure next to it. And tax effect isn't. It's a figure. And that's my total. So my other comprehensive income, or loss, equals the sum of all of my items here. And my total comprehensive income or loss equals my profit from up here. plus my other comprehensive income. Now I'll notice for, 28, for 2018, there's going to be a few extra figures in because I copied these lines from the 2018 report. So I'll have blank figures in here when they actually didn't, I suspect blank here as well. Um, and then in the 2018 year, it looks like they'll have some other items. So this total comprehensive income for the year in those two years, we'll have to make sure that we don't add from this profit line up here, but we add from the total underlying profit line, which is going to be the, um, this blue line here. I'm just going to carry my formulas across. And quickly enter these in. And then I'll come back. Okay, so you do want to make sure that these totals are in. So negative 78 and 329. Negative 78 and 329 and 192 and 2248. 192 and 2248. Very good. All right, now I'll go through the 2018 report. So if I flick there for you to see, um, I'll enter these figures in. And looks like they've got oh for the 2017 year as well they've all oh, restated they've got some discontinued operations so there's a few extra lines underneath so i'll enter these in 64913 okay right back up to here 64913 and continue to enter those in Okay, so I've just quickly entered those figures in. So 2604 and 2760 should be my two figures. 2604 and 2760. So I'm up to here. I've just got to enter in these discontinued operations. So two lines um, for discontinued operations. They sold off some of their operations or discontinued them anyway. Um, and add in this is a total and to get to the final profit attributable to members. Remember, don't enter the earnings per share section. So we've got two lines to enter in for 2018 uh, and 2017. So discontinued operations is a heading. So Bunnings. And for 2017, when they restated those financials. Okay, so this is my loss equals sum of those two items which means my profit attributable to the member was my profit before discontinued operations plus my profit after in this case a loss so minus and check that this is the final figure that we want to use so 1197 and 2873 1197 and 2873 and 329 and 2248. Oh, sorry, what am I looking at? And 407 and 2440. 407 and 2440. Okay, now I'll enter my comprehensive items of comprehensive income for 2018 and 2017. And then update my formula right down below here. 
Okay, so headings, I need to start with my comprehensive income statement for 2018. So scroll down here, heading, I've got two items of foreign currency for these two years. And I've got all five items for the cash flow. I'll just quickly check those. I've only got one here, so I might put both of mine into here. So minus 7 and minus 9. That equals minus 7 minus 2. I've literally just combined those two items together into one line item. You don't have to do that. You can just separate them out how they are. My cash flow hedge. Unrealised gains and losses is where I start. So I've got those two figures, 97 and 136 negative. Realised losses transferred to profit, I also have. <coughs> Share of associates. Nothing for 2017 and tax effect. Now I've also got two items down here to enter. And nothing for this one. So I'll just check my totals. 18 and 150 is right. But these two totals aren't right and that's because I haven't linked to the correct line. Remember when I um, linked back up here we originally scrolled the formula forward from the 20. 15 financial year so if I just literally update that and click in that and just move it down to the correct profit line and then fill that through and then it will check off against my annual report so 1347 and 2891 so 1347 and 2891 so that's correct and you can also check back against the 2016 report 329 and 2248 329 and 2248 so perfect so now all I have to do is go through and do all my formatting the other thing I'd like to do um, now that I know my comprehensive income is correct is to separate out finance income so what I'll do is I'll go and have a look in note one so at the moment West Farmers only this one line for revenue what I want to do in here is right click and insert a couple of lines and call this one finance income and then total revenue and what we're going to do is go and actually find our finance income in our financial statements because it's going to make our life a lot easier when we come to restating the financials when you actually have to separate out finance income now your companies may not call it finance income they may call it interest income or another name that's fine um, just make sure that you're trying to find generally some sort of interest or, or income. It's essentially interest they're earning on their things like their cash in their bank and so forth. So if they've got a lot of cash in bank, you should have some sort of interest income or fi other finance income. Um, most companies will separate out finance costs already and West Farmers has done that. Some companies will list finance income for you already on the finance statement or on the income statement. So it'll have finance income minus finance expenses and it'll give you a net finance cost or income. Some companies will only show you the net cost and won't show you finance income or finance expense. So you have to go to the note and have a look at that. So the idea is just find it wherever it is in your annual report. You need to separate out finance costs and finance income for subsequent assessments. Finance costs are usually separated already in the income statement for you, but finance income may not be. If it is, you're lucky you don't have to do anything extra. But like with me, with Wes Farmers, they don't separate it out in the income statements, I need to go and find it in the notes myself. So revenue, here's my note number. I have to go through and delete all these, but um, essentially note one is the note for revenue for Wes Farmers. So I'm going to scroll down to note one and just see if I can find, if it gives me a breakdown of that. Here we go, here's note one, um, and it tells me what my revenue split up into, and here's my finance income, they call it interest revenue. So for 2016 and 2015, I can enter these two figures, 131 and 27. So 131 and 27, and I'll go to 2018 and find the same thing. 
assume it's still note one, yes. So revenue is just lumped into one big lump sum and note one explains the breakup of revenue. So if I scroll down to note one, um, I've gone past it, no, here it is. Okay, so again, here it is, so interest revenue. So that's my finance income, so 14 and 83. 14 and 83. Okay, so that's my finance income separated. What I have to do now, so is take that out of my revenue and put a formula in here. So I'm going to say equals revenue minus my finance income and then I'll do a total down here. So equals the sum of those two. Now, oops. So drag that across to do this manually for every year. Take away your finance income because we're adding that in, remember. We're, all we're doing is just separating it out so that we can identify it as a separate line. When we come to do subsequent aspects of your assessment, which is really easy for us then, we don't have to worry about doing this. What you want to check is that your total revenue still matches your original financial statement. So the 66883 is still going to match the 2018 um, total, so 66883. Now, I'm pretty sure we linked to that line in a formula down here, in the profit formula. Sorry, the profit before income tax formula, this one. Yes, we did. So we have to just correct that now and make sure that it's linking to total revenue. Once we correct it in one place, we simply just drag it forward. Now, once we've done, we've separated out our finance income, just make sure, just make sure um, that your totals still match. So you've still got the same total comprehensive income for all years. So 1347 and 2891 for 2018. Oops, scroll too far. So 1347 and 2891, which was correct. And again, that my previous, um, so my 2016 report, and I know that they're correct. So that's it. So I'll just go through and do a bit of formatting again. And that's my financial statements entered. I'll show you what it looks like after I finished formatting them. I'm just going to identify all the headings, take off all the bold. Take off all the notes, the references to all the notes. Make my colours all pretty, my white and so format paint of my cells the same. So that they're all pretty and so forth. And put my headings in. My italics and my totals. Put a line in. So I'm just going to go through and do all that to my financial statements in the next couple of minutes. Okay, so that's my finished formatted financial statements. Um, making sure that my totals uh, match back to my original financials. Um, a couple checks. Let's go right up to the top. Just again, check that your other comprehensive income for the year matches your other comprehensive income in your income statement. That your total comprehensive income, so this 1347 and 2891 matches that very, very, very last line that we've just entered. So 1347 and 2891. Um, check that, so going back up here. So that's really important. That line there matches also your closing balance for equity, matches that in your the closing balance for your balance sheet. So 22754 and 23941 matches the closing balance for equity, 22754 and 23941 um, in your balance sheet. And that's pretty much it.